Hello and welcome to my review of Toll for the Brave. This is a 1971 thriller from Jack Higgins, who, as the cover rightfully states, is the author of The Eagle Has Landed, which was a huge hit a few years later in 1975. He's also the author of Solo and Exocet, both of which are reviewed on this very channel. It's fair to say that Higgins was quite prolific, writing more than 60 novels prior to his death last year. Ellis Jackson wakes up with his best friend and girlfriend dead in his bed. He has in his possession the shotgun that killed them, but no recollection of doing the deed. Roll back a few years and Jackson is an Englishman making headlines fighting with the Americans in Vietnam. That's fighting alongside rather than with. Those headlines are abruptly stopped when, hitching a ride to the front on a helicopter, he's shot down and taken prisoner. There he is taught about the Far East by fellow prisoner General James Maxwell St. Clair. He learns about martial arts, chi, and being a bit superpowered. In between, he's interrogated by Chen Kun and Madame Ni, nee, the latter doing the usual with her prisoner, which is a bit cliched, as is his failure to realise it's all part of their plan. The plan, however, is a bit pointless, as they decide to execute the prisoners anyway. Their execution, though, doesn't go to plan. Due to the monsoon weather, their trench collapses and St. Clair and Jackson escape into the jungle. It takes them 52 days to return to the American lines. Once there, Jackson is returned home to a pretty cold welcome, aside from Sheila Ward, who welcomes him very warmly indeed. But haunted by nightmares, Jackson has a psychotic break at his country retreat. He thinks he sees the Viet Cong in the local countryside. Everyone else thinks he's mad. But then, after a shootout in the woods, he's rescued by St. Clair again. He passes out and wakes up with the others dead and is taken into custody. However, the military nearby are almost inclined to believe him because his story is so ridiculous it might almost be true. Also, somebody dosed him with a huge amount of LSD and he needs medical attention. But one of the orderlies tries to kill him, though underestimates the power of Jackson Chi and gets thrown down a lift shaft for his trouble. Jackson escapes after learning from his attacker who hired him. He tracks that guy down to a monastery and learns that he's part of a Chinese spy ring in the UK that are posing as refugees and monks. The body in the bed was not Sinclair at all. Sinclair has been taken prisoner by the Chinese and is being held on an island fortress nearby. Jackson, holding two of the crooks at gunpoint, insists they take him to the island. He intends to sink the boat in the harbour mouth, trapping the criminals there, and sends word to his buddies in the military to come rescue him. So far, so good. This is a slim novel, and it zips along from mystery to mystery with a cracking pace. It may sound a little far-fetched, but it's so frantic you barely have time to consider it. Higgins' writing is perfunctory but adequate for the genre, and the mystery is pretty good. Who is working against Jackson and why? Who can he trust and who can't he? I thoroughly enjoyed it to this point. When Jackson reaches the island, it does go off the rails. He wages a one-man war on the monks, learns that St. Clair has been working with the enemy basically because he loves excitement and danger, and his old pal Chen Kun is involved too. It is trash, and just a bit too familiar trash as well. Higgins' contemporaries Bagley and McLean do this better than he does, and by turning Sinclair traitor, and for the reasons given as well, Higgins really does him dirty. It also doesn't reflect well on the oblivious Jackson. The finale descends into sword-wielding Chinese monk warriors chasing Jackson around the island on horseback while he's doing his best Schwarzenegger in commando impression. Once they get Jackson cornered, St. Clair does the honourable thing and swaps sides again to defend his old pal from them. The Chinese monks are soon dispatched, but St. Clair falls off a cliff top and Jackson goes to rescue him, tossing aside his gun. Just in time for Chen Kun to ride to the opposite of rescue, and finding Jackson unarmed, he decides to fight him mano a mano as all good villains do. He has the better of Jackson until a big wave separates them and rearms Jackson, who then shoots him dead. He learns that the military knew St. Clair was dirty all along, and they want to use Jackson as their man for hire, but he declines. He also learns that it was Sheila who slipped him the LSD um, that made him see the Viet Cong. It really couldn't be anyone else, and she was working for the Chinese all along as well, just keeping an eye on him in case he proved dangerous to their plans, which is not quite if you recall the beginning, how things went, because he was oblivious to their plans until they tried to kill him. 
And if you want somebody dead, why dose them with a likely fatal amount of LSD when you can just hit them in the head with a shovel while they're asleep? The first two thirds of this book are so engrossing in part due to the frantic pace that perhaps it is only their quality that makes the final act seem so mediocre and so formulaic. But it is also where sentences like this are far more noticeable. The rear door opened into a dark stone flagged corridor of the type usually found in a house of that sort leading from the kitchens to the residential area. I don't know about you, but I try to limit my prepositions to two or three, otherwise you get a mess like this. Additionally, what the hell does this even mean? And this is irrelevant, nor is the passage atmospheric, and only this could be argued as being a word chosen for adding to a sense of dread or peril. When Jackson encounters the horseman, this is what Higgins writes. With a sudden rush, a dozen or so horsemen cantered over the hill to the right and crossed our field of vision. Again, issues with unnecessary prepositions and just too much going on. Also, a canter, while quicker than a trot, isn't the word I'd choose to go with sudden. Higgins, a page or two later, writes this. The pony cantered away and there was only the silence. And I was wondering, is canter the only word for a horse's movement that he knows? Until he writes this. I put my heels into the pony and galloped away along the hillside. But when he finally does gallop, it is away from a conversation with Sinclair at exactly the point of the story and a location where the book requires its reckoning. And now I have issues with both of their characters and Higgins is writing. And it gets worse because rather than relate Jackson's single-handed race against time to reload his weapon, well, I simply concentrated on getting the final clip out of the ammunition belt at my waist and into the rifle and I had only one usable hand, remember? But if you relate the struggle as a struggle, you don't need to write this. This review may well seem like an awful lot of nitpicking and complaining. I won't deny that because overall, I enjoyed Toll for the Brave. It begins in a hurry and it doesn't slow down. It's a strong thriller that loses its way in the finale, but it is still easy to recommend. Ultimately, the biggest disappointment is how generic it is, becoming a jumble of seen it all before moments and nonsensical character choices. That the latter is so irritating goes to show that the character building to that point was good, at least at the start, and the premise remained interesting. Sinclair particularly was worth the ATP I paid for this book by himself. It's a shame to see him betrayed by his creator in such a cliched way. He deserved better, and I'd have happily read more of his earlier adventures. A grumbly review, but with a final stress that the strengths of the early going make this easy to recommend. Thanks for watching, like and sub for more, and I'll see you in the next one.